Mm-hmm. Global Telling, you have a prepaid call from. Also, Jopi. Uh, An inmate at the RJ Donovan Correctional Facility, San Diego, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using Global Tail Link. Hello, Hello, homie. What's up, bro? How you doing, homie? Hey. Huh? Oh, uh, you know, just hang in there, man. Hey. I got your kite uh, a couple of days ago. Uh-uh. Hey, Huh? It's a trick. You saying that, right? It's what? Because uh, something told me. It's a <laughs> trick you saying that because I just, I wrote you like a six-page letter. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm going to send it out Sunday. Running down what I've been up to, you know? Okay, let, you know what? I'm gonna and, give you uh, open platform, homie, and let's start right now, homie. I I I got it. Uh, I got it on deck right now. I got it. You know what I mean? You feel me? So the platform is yours, homie. Um, let's go. You're starting right now. Wait, wait, wait. Say that again. I said I, I got I I you know I I got this thing on deck right now. So so you're you're on. You know what I mean? You're you're on it. As far as like the conversation, I got it on deck. You know you feel me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got it. I got this. We uh, right. I, I got it recorded, bro. So uh, let's go right now. Uh, All right. Uh, what you go by? I go by my first name, Puna. Oh, okay. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. What's your nationality? I don't use, uh, I don't use some more in Japanese. Um, are you part of a gang or, or, or organization or used to be in one? No, I'm, I'm a, yeah, I used to, but uh, I'm a straight Christian now. Okay, the platform yeah. is yours, man. Talk without wherever you want. Oof. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm just saying, uh, hey, man, I've been down over 20 years now, 23, 24. And uh, when I came in, I was still a knucklehead. Oh, yeah. I didn't care and stuff. I was just hating on everything, just bitter, angry, mad. You know, so I kind of started off my time of struggling, getting in and out of trouble. I stayed in the shoe for years and years and years, in and out, in and out. To this day, based on my last behavior, uh, my points were all the way up. I'm still stuck on level four. But uh, uh, a few years ago, you know, uh, you know, I've been addicted to the, the drugs. I was really addicted to heroin. And uh, despite almost dying a few times, ODing and waking up in ICU, you know, I still did it. But it was a few years ago that I just said, you know what, I'm tired of it. I give up. I'm going to change. And that that little moment right there, I changed my life, dog. I asked God to come into my heart. My life changed me. I've been on classes. I've been studying a lot. I'm in the Christian ministry of, of, of programs over here. I'm in a seminary college. And, you know, uh, I let go of all that hate and stuff and bitterness and stuff. And, you know, my, I'm 49 now, but in all my 49 years of life, these past years have been the most peaceful, most uh, peaceful to me. I feel more joy and that peace than I ever did in all my life than I have been feeling these past couple of years because I let all that stuff go. I took responsibility of my actions. Yeah, I was dumb. I was a kid. You know, I didn't care. And uh, I hurt people. Even on the line, I hurt a lot of people. You know, uh, it, it doesn't feel good no more. So looking at drugs, hearing people doing it, I'm at that point where I'm disgusted even looking at it. So all I do now is wake up the first thing in the morning. I pray. I pray for everyone. My loved ones, my homies, my family, everyone I know, the staff and inmates, and that's all I intend to do now is uh, change my life for the better, regardless if I ever get out or not. I'm just tired, homie. I'm older, wiser, and uh, to me, God opened up my heart, my eyes and stuff. So, you know, uh, and little by little, I've been getting all my relationships restored to my family. Because before, there was a, we weren't really talking and stuff. But now, I feel good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 
Hey, um, I, try to help them, you know? I don't mean to cut you off, homie. Like, you know, don't forget to send me a picture. Yeah. You can. Is that possible? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, uh, my sister, I just called my sister earlier. Uh-huh. She got COVID. Oh, okay. Uh, Cindy knows her. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. My sister got COVID. And uh, I was going to tell her, man, send you a picture. But I was going to wait a little bit, see how she feels and stuff. Okay, I holler at Cindy, too. Uh, I, I let her know I'm talking. I talk to you after this conversation. And then, you know, she's looking for your pictures, too. Man, so. tell Cindy I send mine. It's a trick because I was just thinking about her uh-huh. and leave us last week. Just wondering what they were doing, right? Yeah. Yeah, and hey, you know, I I go to chapel over here. I was looking up one of the uh, the papers and I seen your last name. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's the same person. Uh-huh. On uh, I might be my brother yeah. or something, man. <laughs> but let, let's go back to this interview, homie, because we don't got enough time. Um, you know. Okay, go ahead. Um, so uh, when you uh when you first got sentenced, how you feel about it? And then when you uh, went to prison, hit the main line, what was your mentality? Yeah, well, when I, when I first got sentenced, you know, I think Cindy and them were there. I threw the, uh, I got into, we got into a court right, the courtroom right. Uh, the homies were all there. Cindy, Levis, they were all there when I, uh, I got it. Me and my family got to a right in the courtroom on a sentencing day. So I came to prison, and uh, I just came. Getting ready to ride, ride right or die, you know. Came to prison. Uh, I've already been in and out, but this one, they gave me a life, set, double life. Came to prison, that's all I did was uh, hurt people, man. So I got a couple of of murders on two staff in Calipat back in 99, 2000. And I just got a whole bunch of stabbings after that. Just kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. And, uh, this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. No, I was bitter, mad, angry, just everything. I didn't care, man. I was, uh, I was running with the Asian Pacific Islanders. You know, that's all we did. We looked out for each other. And you see, everywhere I've been to, we the ones that run the yard and stuff. Uh, got, got all that stuff sold up, you know. Uh, you know, so I was always at that page and stuff. I was always the big Uso. Most of the time, because a lot of the homies come in, they're all youngsters. And, you know, that's all we uh, we, we messed with, uh, just the Asian Pacific Islanders and stuff. Those are in the Kamaias and stuff, and Laos. And, uh, you know, just... Man, I, it was ridiculous, man. Just thinking about it now, it's just, like... Disappointing that I was acting like that. But, uh, uh you know... We grow and we learn, you know? Yeah. But, uh, you know the funny thing? Go ahead, I've been man. doing good, so good now. The past seven years, I have not caught no write-ups. In seven years. And I'm supposed to see the board, my first documentary board, uh, next year, uh, this year or next year. And in fact, I got a ruling yesterday that my, uh, my conviction... Got, uh, is under review in the California Supreme Court That's because right. some uh, trial technicality. So, you know. Uh, but that's all I do, man. That's how I earn my living in prison and uh, how I eat. I, I do my law work. I do law work. Right. Can you elaborate okay. uh, about, you know, me, what, what uh, your, um, you know, mean, um, like, you know, your early years up in there, you know, talking about, like, you know, what, you know, mean, you know, mean, what goes down in there, whatever you can talk about, you feel me, whatever you can't, you can't, you know, talking about. Oh, like, yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, when, when I was running the yard and stuff with the homies, it was a politics a lot. So every time a homie comes in, the first time a homie who pulls up, first thing we ask for is his paperwork. His 128G uh, and his, uh, and it's, uh, you know, just the paperwork. Want to see what you're convicted of, what you're over here on the yard for, you know. And then uh, some homie, something every now and then you have somebody that won't give it up. So we used to give them like 30, 30, 60 days to come up with their paperwork. If they don't, they're a victim. And, uh, you know, we get a lot of homie options. It's like, here, look, this is how we do it. If you want to run by yourself, go run by yourself. But look. If something happens, don't even come over here. Don't even run with us, come around us, do nothing. But you're obligated under the car. 
you are obligated, if something happens, you're obligated to be there. Mandatory yard, you know, uh, it was uh, just political and stuff. Uh, you know, somebody got to get jumped on or deeply disciplined, you know. When your turn comes up, you got to be uh, be ready and stuff. Just do or die, like, you know, uh, it was real... Uh, it was, it, was, it was a vicious cycle, man. It was, it was bad. It was vicious. But, you know, nowadays, a lot of stuff, a lot of that stuff has slowed down. Because when I came in in 90, first came in prison in 93, they were still shooting us with the mini. But in 95, when I was in Solidarity, they stopped shooting everybody. Now they just used the block gun. I came back in 98 on this case. And, you know, it was still riding and stuff. Uh, no, uh, but now a lot of people in prison now, a lot of the inmates in prison, when they come in, you know, they don't want to get in trouble. And everybody on the yard has a cell phone. So ain't nobody trying to get in trouble. They don't want to lose their cell phones. You know, that's how it is nowadays, I guess. But, uh, you know, it's not uh, all the work I put in, a lot of us put in for the cause, you know, to uh, make a name for the homies. You know, a lot of that, it doesn't even mean, mean anything no more. Everybody's, you know, just trying to get money and stuff. But me, you know, uh, I gave that stuff up. I was, gave that up last year right, right, when right. I came over here. Yeah. Can you, can you? Now I just. Go ahead, go ahead, Oos. Keep on going. No, that's all. Now I just uh, do my time and try to uh, educate myself. You know, right. I've completed uh, almost every program they give me. CGA, NA, AA, AVP, basic AVP, advanced. I took some college courses, some acting uh, college courses, uh, uh, creative writing. I did all that stuff. I did so many programs. You know how much time they took off? It almost took off 10 years. You have 60 seconds remaining. I still got another 30 or 40 years to do. Hey, Oops, before this conversation oh, cuts know. off, Oops, I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah. Hey, is it cool, like, when I get your picture from whoever, um, you want you want me to put your name and yeah. CDC number down, homie, and, and your book and whatever? Let, let me know. You can call me back, though, anytime, yeah. homie. I got you. Call me back anytime. I, I want you to call me back. Call this, back this, right this, this is going to be, a, like, a segment. You can do that. Yeah. You want to call me back right now? Yeah, you, oh, right yeah, now. you can call me back when this hung up, man. Yeah. I'm a porter, dog. <laughs> So uh, I'm a porter slash Mac Rip. Yeah. So I'm out here uh, uh, doing, you know, cleaning the tables. Right now they're running pill lines. So yeah. Yeah. Right now it's time to use the phone. Right. You know, my, my channel is not, not to promote anything, you feel me? It's like, you know, education and, you know, for, for our youth, you feel me? So, you know what I mean? Uh, they know what's cracking, you feel me? It's not the life, you feel me? So that, that's what it's about. But